Hello guys and uh, welcome to the video here. Now here we are going to be talking about the WWE Draft which will be taking place uh, tomorrow night on Tuesday Night Smackdown which will now be live. So on the, uh, <laughs> on the screen you can see a graphic showing 20 names uh, which is of course the uh, choice the uh, picks that I would rank from 1 to 10 for each brand to take uh, and uh, uh, on you know, the, the left side you have the red uh, which is obviously uh, Monday Night Raw and uh, on the right we have uh, on, on the right we have the blue which is Smackdown Live so straight off the bat here you can see there are some names here that look quite confusing maybe like for instance Don Young is Smackdown's third pick Enzo Amore is there but not Big Cass and how about Kota Bushi he is also there uh, as well as Corey Graves so what we're going to talk about here is uh, how the uh, draft should be take place uh, in my opinion so uh, we uh, we we start off the uh, we start off the show Vince McMahon comes out and uh, he uh, him Stephanie Shane come out and they flip a coin uh, to choose who you know chooses their first choice uh, who, who, sorry, who gets the first pick? So, uh, it's, uh, Stephanie wins. Uh, and, uh, she gets the first choice. And this wasn't my idea for this year, next bit now. For the most part, all this is my idea, but this year, next little bit, uh, isn't my idea. So, Stephanie gets the first choice, and then Shane gets two choices after that uh, so just yeah now everything's gonna be for me for me it's my ideas just what I think that I would like to see so uh, we see uh, Seth Rollins uh, is the first choice as he should be he's one of the best there but uh, before we get into this here, I want to lay down some, you know, sort of just lay down some groundwork, so to speak. So, uh, commentators, Michael Core is the default commentator for Raw. Marlo Ronaldo is the default commentator for SmackDown. And this is said at the start of the show, Vince McMahon says this. Vince McMahon then says there will only be one world championship, so make your choices count. Uh, there will only be one tag team championship, make your choices count. And this makes it more, like this makes each pick even more important to each commissioner of their respective brands. They need to choose the best of the best from the off, from the get go, because it means more now. So, uh, st uh, we, so backstage, by the way, I want this to be like the original draft where you see each commissioner in the back, in the office, sort of trying to work it out strategically almost. So, uh, out comes Seth Rollins, uh, out comes Steph McMahon and says, my first choice will be Seth Rollins. And, uh, out comes, uh, out comes Shane O'Mac, he says, my first two choices will be AJ Styles and Kevin Owens. We have Stephanie coming and say, those are two fantastic picks, but by the way, this is for her second pick. Those are two fantastic picks, but you've made a fatal error. Because 
By the way, uh, I should have mentioned Roman Reigns will not be eligible for the draft. Just putting it in there. Uh, you, you've made a fight error because those are two fantastic picks, but I'm going to take Dean Ambrose. That gives her a 66 a 66% chance to get the World Championship on Raw. Uh, then we see Shane in the back and he's like, okay, we need a championship. We need to go for the next most prestigious title in the company. And debatably, one of the most prestigious type titles in the company, uh, according to its history anyway, is the Intercontinental Championship. So he comes out and says, I want the Intercontinental Championship on SmackDown. So my choice will be Darn Young, as he's going up against The Miz. And what this does is, now that match means more. That match is more important now to SmackDown, that Darn Young needs to win that match. And if not, then there's a huge chance that The Miz... There's a huge chance that the Maze will be drafted to war, and as a result, the IC title, the IC title goes to war if Don Young cannot win that match at Battleground. Uh, Stephanie McMahon comes out and says, uh, "I want Sami to see him," and uh, Shane comes out and says. You know what? That's another great. That, that that that's another great choice. But you've made an other error. I'm gonna take the women's champion, Charlotte. So now the women's division is on SmackDown. Stephanie McMahon comes in and says, "Well, I'm gonna take Big E." Now, Shane McMahon comes out and. He doesn't choose Kofi Kingston. He doesn't choose Xavier Woods to spite Stephanie because that's silly. Because if you split up the New Day and you take one of the members of the New Day, then it's at a loss for both bands, really, in a way. Despite each competitor being great. So he says, I'm going to take the boss, Sasha Banks. Steph comes out and says, I'm gonna take Kofi Kingston. Now, Shane comes out and he chooses Enzo Amoy, and you can see that Big Cass isn't there. And the reason for that is because I would have this draft continue on uh, to uh, con continue on uh, live on the WWE network, and having that possibility, the Big Cass isn't going to be with Enzo and Moy, loom over everyone, could be a gripping sort of intensive moment to get everybody, uh, to, to get everybody to be able to uh, tune in to watch that and see the what the fate of Big Cass is. Steph, uh, Stephanie then comes out and says, I want Xavier Woods. Makes the new day. Uh, it comes Shane and says, "Well, I'm gonna take Baron, but Baron Corbin, because I mean he's a great competitor." Um, and uh, she, uh, Stephanie knows that she needs one of those mid card titles, and the only mid card title left is the US title. So she comes out and says, "I'm gonna take." Rusev. It comes uh, Shane McMahon and uh, also Brock Lesnar is not available uh, in this draft. He is uh, for hire um, by each uh, respective brand. Uh, so uh, the only way to get uh, Brock Lesnar on your show is either to have his opponent on your show or to hire him, uh, which uh, the hiring will come after SummerSlam because, of course, his opponent is Randy Orton for uh, Summer, 
there for SummerSlam. So the only way to get him on the show in the next month or so is to have Randy Orton on your show. So Shane McMahon comes out and says, I want Randy Orton so as I can have access to the beast incarnate himself, Brock Lesnar, for the next six weeks or so. And uh, this also opens up opportunity because what we're doing here with SmackDown, we're making this year the sort of hardcore wrestling fan show by having guys like Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, uh, Finn Balor, and eventually Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, guys like that. And uh, what we can do with Randy Orton is we can have him be that character that uh, he hates all the change and he's going after all the new guys. And it's uh, trying to take out all the new guys coming in from the indie scene, stuff like that. And uh, then eventually we get to WrestleMania and somebody you know can go up against him and uh, and not only go up against him but can Randy Orton can put them over. But then uh, you know uh, Stephen McMahon comes out and says, "Well, I want the franchise player himself." John Cena and by making him choice number eight by making John Cena choice number eight and by putting Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose who are both in the world title picture by putting Big E, uh, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods the holders of the tag team championships and by choosing uh, Rusev for the US title uh, title holder by making John Cena pick number eight the franchise player pick number eight it shows how much how important those titles are to raw how important it is that they have those titles that those titles are more important than the franchise player himself but then uh, Shane McMahon comes out and says we want the best of the best on Smackdown that's not just meaning the best titles, the best and the best wrestlers, but we also want the best commentators. And to assemble my commentary team, I'm going to choose Corey Graves. Uh, Stephen McMahon comes in and says, well, you can take Corey Graves because I'm going to take Bray Wyatt. And uh, finally, uh, Shane McMahon comes out and says, well, my final pick will be the demon himself, Finn Baylor. Uh, and then, for the final choice, we're probably going to be expecting, you know, somebody from NXT. Maybe a Shinsuke Nakamura. Maybe a Samoa Joe. Stephanie McMahon comes out and says, and by the way, this isn't my idea, but the choice is my idea, and says, well, on Monday Night Raw, well, we will be launching the Cruiser Weight Division at the end of the Cruiser Weight Classic. And during that uh, Cruiser Weight Classic, we have just added in a new prize for the winner to be fighting for. The Cruiser Weight Championship, and I'm gonna back the who I want to win that tournament, and I'm gonna back Kota Ibushi as he's gonna be our final choice. And nobody knows Kota Ibushi is available for this draft, so it's a surprise. So let's look at this band split and see what how I wanted to piece it together, why I wanted those to be. The ten names for each uh, respective brand. So AJ Styles, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is one of the best in the company, one of the best in the world. Uh, he's fantastic. There was a huge chance that he could win back that WWE title at Battleground from Dean Ambrose. AJ Styles, on the other hand is once again one of the best in the world he represents a new era in WWE he represents everything that this quote-unquote new era is supposed to be 
he's the guy that got away from WWE and now they want to take advantage of having him. So have him be the face of SmackDown. Dean Ambrose come, is uh, the second choice for Raw simply because he holds the WWE Championship. Also, if we put in Roman Reigns into Raw, then we can have that Shield triple threat match uh, at WrestleMania. I know it's going to be happening at Battleground, but we can have it happen at WrestleMania as well. Which I think it should happen at WrestleMania. It's more important for it to have it happen at WrestleMania. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Kevin Owens is SmackDown's choice number two. For really some of the same reasons as AJ Styles. He's one of the best. He's phenomenally amazing, talented, gifted wrestler. Uh, he could really uh, be the face of that brand. Although he won't be in... At, uh, at the start of the brand split, yeah, he ends up going to AJ Styles. Sami Zayn is choice number three for Raw, so as we can split up Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, and then the next time that they meet, we can actually put them into a tag team. Uh, I I find that to be quite an interesting uh, dynamic, as uh, you know, you could have uh, Kevin Owens turn face, maybe Sami Zayn's being beat down, Kevin Owens comes out to help him out because at the end of the day he still cares for him, uh, sort of idea. Now Don Young is choice number three for SmackDown because this shows that Shane has faith in him to win the Intercontinental uh, title. Also by having him be choice number three. It obviously anti so to speak in that match between him and uh, and 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 the Miz at Battleground, and I really like that idea. So uh, the next three choices for Raw is Big E, Kofi Kings, and Xavier Woods. The New Day, a three-hour show really needs some entertainment. Um, that's what the New Day do. They they bring in that entertainment that's needed on Raw, which is ultimately a stale show. Uh, Charlotte and Sasha Banks will be the next two for Smackdown uh, Charlotte being the women's champion and Sasha Banks being the top women's competitor in my opinion in the company right now and I think it's important to have her in the brands uh, in, in the to be a top 10 draft pick and uh, this really solidifies that Smackdown is going after the women's division as well uh, so next for Smackdown then is of course Enzo Amore by choosing Enzo Amore as I said before it really uh, but by having Enzo Amore there and not having uh, Big Cass there it makes people want to know the fear of Big Cass and Enzo Amore and that's really the idea that went into it Rusev being number 7 he's the US title holder they need that US title because they need a mid card title. Uh, Barn Corbin, of course, is the next pick for SmackDown. I I don't really know why I chose this. It just felt right sort of idea. John Cena being the next choice for Raw. He's the franchise player. Randy Orton then, you know, uh, it, it kind of seems right to have them at the same uh, pick for each selected brand, you know, being number eight. Showing that the new talent is uh, the future sort of idea, but they're still kind of relevant. And you know, I I just like the idea of having them there. And obviously, with their history being having so, so much matches uh, together, you know, uh, it seems right to have them at the same pick as each other. Bay Wyatt is going to be a huge part of War in my. Uh, you know my sort of idea of choosing this and uh, also now uh, and, and this year works the same as with AJ with having Bray Wyatt there and not having uh, the Wyatt family and having AJ and not having the club there it makes people want to know the fear of those competitors uh, are they going to be drafted to the same plan well the only way to find out is to watch the show on the WWE Network 
Corey Graves being number nine for SmackDown. He's not as important as the competitors, uh, but he is an important part of the show, and that's why he's at number nine. And uh, Shane O'Mac wants the best experience for his audience, and Corey Graves will give that along with Marlo Ronaldo. Uh, Kota Bushi is number nine for, uh, sorry, number ten for uh, Raw. Simply launched the cruiserweight division, have one of the top competitors in the world in it, and not only uh, is this a great pick, but it really builds up excitement on Raw for maybe the opening hour, so you can fill up with cruiserweight matches. And then Finn Balor, we have. As number 10, we all know that he's the future. We all know he could be a potential face of the company, so why not have him there? And having SmackDown's last pick so it sort of generates more excitement. So that is uh, the brand split. Uh, now, I did say that there would only be one more title, and what I would, uh, in my, if I was doing that, I would only have one more title. And, uh, the reason why I would do that is because that makes the mid card title so much more important. If the world title isn't Raw and not in SmackDown, that makes the IC title more important. The the uh, main of, uh, the main affinities of that band, such as AJ, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, you know. Uh, you know this kind of shoots Darn Young into uh, being an upper mid carder because he's not quite main event level, but uh, that makes everybody need that title. They need that title because they can't go for the world title, so they need the next best thing in that brand, and that is of course the IC title. So uh, Darn Young being picked here. I wouldn't have him hold the title for long, no, honestly. I would have him win it at Battleground. And uh, we're we at the feet of Roman Reigns. And whenever Roman Reigns goes over to war, AJ Styles challenges him for the title. And him being a fighting champion, he accepts that challenge. And he is defeated. And... Uh, what we do then is uh, we have uh, Don Young continue that journey to becoming great uh, along with Bob Backlund and he can't get that title back. Uh, so then what we get is we get a journey of him climbing up the uh, card to the main offence spot and going one on one with someone like AJ Styles or Kevin Owens or uh, even Randy Orton for the title for the IC title so uh, no world title on Smackdown how do we uh, how, uh, will the world title always be on board not in this instance not in my opinion what I would do is I would have it that the world title can transit can be uh, trying to get the right word uh, can be transferred I guess over to Smackdown and the way that this would be done is money in the bank cashing is one way that say AJ Styles wins the money in the bank he can cash that in and win the world title. Uh, the Royal Rumble went the Royal Rumble when I saw I can uh, instantly gets that world title opportunity opportunity and goes one on one at WrestleMania for the title and uh, personally what I would do is also I would have uh, maybe a match at Survivor Series where you have uh, each uh, competitor go one on one uh, sorry not each competitor you have a competitor from Smackdown and competitor, a competitor from uh, go one on one at Survivor Series and you have them compete for the chance to uh, be number one contender for the title and then what you can do is you can have you can bring back Starcade in December and uh, 
you can have the winner of that match whether it's from the same brand of the champion or from the opposite brand of the champion go one on one go one on one at Starcade for the world championship and if it's from the opposite brand then it can be put over to the uh, other brand uh, and that's how it can sort of transfer across the bands but those are the only three opportunities that I would have to go over to have the title go over to the uh, uh, over to the different brand and it just ups the ante in my opinion it makes it so much more prestigious it makes the IC title more prestigious and if the uh, world title was to go over to Smackdown it would make the US title so much more prestigious so uh, yeah I think that's uh, gonna end it here thank you very much for watching if uh, you agree let me know down below if you disagree let me go know down below and let me know what you would do thanks for watching see you again